quadratic expressions is the topic which we are going to discuss for today's session. Now quadratic expression, how are the quadratic expressions derived? They have been derived from various different types of polynomials which we have discussed in the previous sessions. So let's start with the introduction of how the quadratic expressions are defined in mathematics. So for example, I take a polynomial. The various types of polynomials, say I take the linear polynomial ax plus b. We all know that this is a linear polynomial in one variable x because I found only one variable x in the entire expression. So this is a linear expression or a linear polynomial in one variable x which is the unknown in this expression and a and b are the constants. So similarly if I have ax squared plus bx plus c is called a quadratic expression. So we identify that whenever the power of x is raised by one additional unit we get the different types of polynomials by different names. Similarly, when I raise this to power 3, power 1, power 2 and power 3, ax cube, bx square plus cx plus d is with power 3. So it is called a cubic polynomial or a cubic expression and so on. So until we just increase the power of x by one unit, we get different types of expressions out of which this is called quadratic expression and hence we are going to study the quadratic expression in brief about how the properties, what are the various properties included in quadratic expression. So let's see with the quadratic expression definition. So when I come with the definition of quadratic expression, an expression or a polynomial so with the definition, a polynomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is called a quadratic expression with where the condition is that a, b and c are constants a, b, c are constants which are either real or complex. So this is the symbol for complex numbers and this is the symbol for real numbers and the condition says that the constants a, b, c identified in the quadratic expression might be either real numbers or it may also be the complex numbers or the imaginary numbers. So under these conditions and here this is called note this is called a quadratic expression in one variable so where the variable is identified to be x. So in this case the unknown or the variable is identified to be x and the second most important note is that a should not be equal to 0. So in this definition I, I don't have a equal to 0 because if I have say for example reason let's take this as a reason to support my statement that a strictly should not be equal to 0. So let's go on the contradictory path where I take a equal to 0 and see what happens to the quadratic expression. So let a equal to 0. So when a equals to 0, I substitute the value of a equal to 0 in the quadratic expression ax square plus bx plus c. So in this case, substituting a equal to 0 in ax square plus bx plus c which is the general quadratic expression then I get 0 times x squared plus bx plus c with a being equal to 0. Therefore on further simplification this gives me bx plus c with the first term vanishing with multiplication of 0. The whole of the first term gets vanished and I get bx plus c. So this makes me understand that when a is equal to 0 it cannot be a quadratic expression but this reduces to a linear expression which can be clearly seen through the power of x being 1 which we already discussed in case of the introduction part. 
So when we have a linear expression for a equal to 0, this restricts the definition of quadratic expression. A quadratic expression is a polynomial strictly with its variable power being equal to 2. The highest power in a quadratic expression is identified to be 2. The highest power in a linear expression is identified to be 1. The highest power in a cubic expression is identified to be 3. Hence, we cannot call this a quadratic expression because the highest power here is identified to be 1. Therefore, for a equal to 0, quadratic expression reduces to linear expression in any case of b and c, irrespective of the values of b and c. Therefore, for a equal to 0, quadratic expression reduces to linear form. Therefore, my final condition is that a should not be equal to 0, is what I support with the second point. My third note about the quadratic expressions is that when I take this, each of them split separately, then the first term ax square is called the quadratic term. When I take the second term bx, this is called the linear term. Now what makes us call this a quadratic term and a linear term is again going back to the introduction. We have already identified that if the power of x is 2, then that gives us the definition of a quadratic expression. If the power of x is 3, it gives me the cubic expression. If the power of x is 4, it gives me quartic expression. If the power of x is 5, then it gives me quintic expression, So, which we are going to learn in the further future classes. So when I have the power of x is 2, I call this a quadratic term because strictly the power of x is 2. And I call this a linear term. The second term of the quadratic expression is called a linear term because simply the power of x is 1. And finally, the last term c doesn't have any x. It is independent of the variable x. Therefore, this term is called the constant term. So c could, would be the constant term. Term. So each of the terms of a quadratic expression has its own names. Say for example, I have ax squared plus bx plus c. ax squared is the quadratic term, bx is the linear term, c is the constant term. So when I take any example of 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, then I can easily identify the first term which is the quadratic term of this given quadratic expression is 2x square and the linear term of this quadratic expression is negative 3 times of x and the constant term of the quadratic expression is 4. Has its own definition with each of its term as defined taken with an example.